Good afternoon, everybody. This is Captain Mark Hollywood Johnson, and we're out here in the middle of absolute nowhere with the boys from Salt Strong. And today's little episode is going to be on how to mackerel fish, Spanish mackerel fishing 101. So what are we doing out here? We're out here in the Gulf of Mexico. We are outside of the Everglades National Park. Let's say we're 20 miles from home, and we're sitting in about 13 feet of water. And no numbers, nowhere special. We're just out here going to drag a chum bag around. We're going to set up and do some mackerel fishing. So what do you do when you come out here? First time out here trying to figure it out. Most important is what direction is your tide moving? Not only what direction is your tide moving, what direction is your tide moving in, which direction is your wind going? So right now, this afternoon, we timed it to where we would have the falling tide, which means the tide is heading out to the Gulf. And we have an east wind today between 10 and 12 knots. So what that means is the tide and the wind are working together. They are moving in the same direction, which is going to help us anchor the boat nice. And it's going to help our chum slick to go behind the boat and let us cast downwind into our chum slick and see if we can't catch the elusive Spanish mackerel and 15 of his other buddies. When you fish out here in the Gulf, you never know what you might catch from catfish to cobia to sea trout to jacks and blue runners and different kinds of snappers. Uh, there is a plethora of fish out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And the cool thing is, is that they all can be taken on bait, fly, artificial. So today we're going to play with some shrimps and we're going to play with some slam shadies and see what we can put together here in the middle of nowhere in the Gulf of Mexico, Spanish mackerel fishing 101. All right, so what we do first is we already seen we deployed my chum bag, which is just a block of chum, okay, tournament style chum. It's in an industrial bag, a little bigger holes. And what we're going to do is do a couple laps out here while I look at my bottom machine by Simrad. And we're not, again, we are on no special numbers. We are just going to do a little driving around to see if we can come up with any kind of different bottom. Out here in the Gulf, the bottom is all the same. It's very flat. There are some potholes. There are some grass. But for the most part, this whole fishery out here is not based on a spot as it is the condition. Good color water, nice emerald green. We got the right tide and the right wind all working in our favor. So we're out here in 13 feet of water. We're going to do a couple little circles and cover a little ground. At the same time, we're looking at the bottom machine. We're dragging our chum bag. We already got some birds in here and we're putting a little love out here so that any fish in the area can catch on the chum train. So stay tuned. We're going to be on the anchor here in just a minute and we're going to get fishing. So all we're doing is we're just driving around out here. We're going to cover a little bit of ground, drag our chum block, and we're just looking for some differential in the bottom. At the same time, our tide is starting to pick up and move in our favor. So you'll see a little bait scratches. You'll see it's very flat bottom out here. A lot of these little humps is just wave activity. When you are in such shallow water, the strength of your sonar, all that's going on, can sometimes over magnify the bottom. But when we find something we like, we'll know. But again, fishing out here is not spot specific, it's condition. We want the tide and the wind going the same direction. We want the nice water and we want it's good water temp, 74 degrees. And so this is just something I like to do because you can stumble upon. Sometimes you find a big grass knoll out here. Sometimes you find a big pothole. You might find a wreck that nobody knows about. So you just put a little time and see what we can see. See again out here in the Gulf, just a little differential, a little bit of color activity. That could definitely be a little different grass bottom, maybe some mangrove snappers and stuff. Go back up current here and drop anchor. Nice big open spot here. We don't have any buoys anywhere. So here we are out here mackerel fishing and we got a couple bites right away and got cut off. So now we're going to rig the slam shady with a little haywire twist and see if we can catch one on a little piece of number three wire. Remember when you do the haywire twist, you always want to make the handlebar and you want to rotate it, kink it, and break it. You never cut that with pliers. You see that in some other videos we've done. 
That makes your nice and smooth right here. You'll never bleed and it doesn't hang on your shirt. It's perfect. So as I'm rigging this up here with the Albright Special, your mono leader to your wire connection, I got Luke over here fishing with a jig and shrimp because when all else fails out here, everything eats a jig and shrimp. You can see our chum slick behind the boat. Birds are working in it. Out here in the Gulf, right here today, we're in 13 feet of water. Most common anywhere between 10 and 13 feet is about the most you find out here without traveling really far offshore. We're sitting on the anchor nice. And tide and wind are working for us. A little piece of wire on the shady. You go down range behind your chum slick, you hit the water, let it sink. And it's just a slow retrieve and a little rod tip jigging. See if we can get the bite here. There's bite, got him, fish on. It's one of the cool things about fishing with a shrimp out here is you never know what you catch. Jacks, blue runners, catfish, lady, there's a whole smorgasbord. A little jacker veil there, I have the D hooker here if you want. So one thing about fishing in your chum slick you want to make sure you're in your chum slick. No reason to cast off the side of the boat. You want to stay. You can see the slick behind the boat. That's where all your activity is. And you're just lots of repetition, lots of casting. Sometimes you can get bites right away. Sometimes it takes a while for fish to show up. Sometimes they don't show up at all. It's all part of the game out here. I got a bit right behind the boat on the shady. I let that sink. Got the bite. Let's see what we got here. It looks like a mackerel. It is right behind the boat on the shady. Ta da! Oh, release! Good. All right. That's a good old fashioned catch and release. Nice thing about the shady, it's so durable that it mackerel with all its teeth, catch fish, let it go, and catch another one. You catch two or three on a rubber worm, you're doing good. Oh, there's another one right here behind the boat. Ooh, another nice mackerel right here, right behind the boat. On the shady, see him just spit up something? All right, let's see if we can't put him in the boat. Go down here to grab the leader. Ta-da! So when grabbing a Spanish mackerel, hence the nickname Slimy, they're very slippery. So you want to get him underneath the peck fins and try to use that to isolate that one little finger in the gill here like I got to hold him good because you can see those teeth don't mess around. Okay, now we're gonna keep a couple of these for a little hook and cook because believe it or not, fresh Spanish mackerel is very tasty when you skin them and cut the bloodline out. And I'm gonna treat these boys to some awesome fish tacos tonight and you're gonna get a chance to eat that. And so that was two macros plus I missed one. That's three bites. And the cool thing about the Shady is that it's still in one piece. That's amazing. Um, that is a baby shark. Let's see if we can get the shark to eat the Shady because no one likes sharks more than Captain Mark. Oh, got him. It might be, it might be actually be a small cobia now that we got a little light on him. It could very well be, but we get a little, uh, we get a sharp nose shark out here. It looks just like, and also a remora, but let's look and see. It's one of the three. You know what? It's a baby cobia. Look at that, baby cobia on the shady. It didn't even have to cast at that one. That's some Hollywood game right there, boys and girls. That's how we do it. There's a cobia right behind the boat. Ate the slam shady on the wire leader and we are going to let you go here mister if i can get you one thing about a cobia they are definitely ass whoops actually a butt kicking fish i got you all right shady in the mouth cobia still going beautiful who doesn't love a cobia let him go wipe my hands down here quick like I said, that little Atlantic sharp nose shark out here. We also get very small black tips and remores, and they all have that same silhouette. 
but that my my friend was a real live cobia. All right, the same shady now is two mackerels, one cobia, two missed bites. So that's one of the things about fishing. I, I said it before out here in the Gulf is you never know what you show up. We shark fish out here, and you might see a tiger shark. You could see a big hammerhead. You see turtles out here. You never know what you got. That a boy. Stay right where you're at. So the jig and shrimp technique that we made on the video last year, we're putting to, to use. It works amazing out here. Rod tip to me here. Mackerel up and in. Again, you try to hold him and using those pec fins to utilize him to keep him still. One finger in the gill if you can get away with it. Lots of teeth, hooks out, in the box. Safe to say, boys, fresh fish for dinner tonight. Put a big shark on it. You get over to your right. Just do your thing. Okay, you got wire leader, careful up there. Do not try this at home, folks. In case it's a big cove. 33 to the fork, we're going to get a gaffing lesson. Nice and smooth. Wind down to the water and lift the parallel. Lift the parallel. There you go. So that's what I was saying. That's the Atlantic sharp nose shark. They're popular out here in the Gulf. Light tackle fishing. Okay, he's good. However, it looks like his jig head may not be. We'll see. It's good stuff. 10 pound braid on a good rod and reel you can catch all you want out here. It's amazing. The right tackle does the trick. All right, here we go. Let's come to my hand. Keep winding, keep winding, keep winding. Oh, best way to let him go. All right, good work. Yep, good work. Let me get this stuff out of the way. All right, so wrapping up our quick afternoon out in the Gulf here. Spanish mackerel fishing 101. The bite turned on pretty good. We caught five or six different species on the Slam Shady, the Cobia, the Spanish mackerel. We caught a triple tail today. We've also caught a couple of catfish, because that's what I do. They're a specialty in catching catfish. We caught some Jack Revels, and we're gonna wrap this up here and head for the barn and clean some fish. But just again, the jig and shrimp, hard to beat. The Slam Shady worked fantastic today. A simple piece of wire, a jig head, it's a very simple setup. A good block of chum or two, you're mackerel fishing. Guys, the Spanish mackerel does not get the credit it's due in the inshore fishery up and down both coasts of Florida. They are tremendous eating if you do it right. I got him right here. I, I, I get him here. Okay, if you can skin it and cut the bloodline out and eat it fresh, they are fantastic. They love to get my glasses wet. Nice fish here. We're going to grab him by the tail, baby. Gotcha. Voila. Spanish mackerel 101. As we finish up our time in the Gulf, we're going to release this fish right into this cooler, and it's going to go contribute to these boys eating fresh fish dinner tonight. Once again, Spanish mackerel. There he goes. He heard dinner, and he got away. But fishing today was good. We got a box full for dinner. All nice, proper-sized Spanish mackerel. We're 45 minutes from the barn, folks. Sun is setting. We're going to fire up the big Verado 400, and Hollywood's going to take these boys eastbound. Signing off tonight, Hollywood, Captain Mark Johnson, FloridaKeysFunFishing.com. I'm out with the boys from SaltStrong.com. If you got any questions on how to fish in the Gulf, how to do the Spanish mackerel, how to rig the wire, the jig heads, the slam shades, all the things that we do, do not be afraid to reach out. You can find me again, FloridaKeysFunFishing.com and SaltStrong.com. Peace out. Are you an inshore saltwater angler who loves catching redfish, speckled trout, snook, and flounder? If so, can I send you a free pack of these irresistible slam shady lures? We developed this with over 12,000 serious anglers, including many full-time guides. And in our 20 years of fishing the flats, 
we have yet to see a lure that consistently catches our favorite fish as this. And we have one free pack per angler for a limited time. Click down below now to grab yours.